Well, I love that music. So you know what time it is. It's that time of the afternoon where we bring on people who are part of the Noodleberg universe and they get to come on and share something good. And I'm super excited today to have my friend Powell. He's a friend. He's a client. He's a serial entrepreneur like me. So we've been in deals together. We've won. We've failed. Um, I'll let you tell him how we met. But uh, Powell, welcome to the show. It's your chance to tell us something good. <laughs> awesome. I'm happy to. I'm excited to be here, Steve. Um, oh, you know, it's funny. You talk about how we met. I think we met about six, seven, eight years ago. And and it, it's, it was just out of pure chance. I was having lunch. And I forgot who I was having lunch with. And he just mentioned, he's like, you know what? You should talk to Nudelberg. And I'm like, <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll talk to this guy, Steve Nudelberg. And, and we met and hit it off from day one, right? Um, just I remember, everything, yeah. everything you bring, the, the energy, the, the, the genuineness as well, right? Because like, <laughs> the first time we met, it was just all about helping, right? Like, hey, tell me how I can help you. What can I do to help you in what you're doing? And, and that's all it was. It was more of relationships and everything with you, right? It's all around relationships. And Well, you know, the funny thing know. was is that you were not a typical accountant <laughs> or person in finance. So I was intrigued. I go, this could be fun, man. This could be great. So, you know. Yeah. And, and here we are, what, eight years later, still talking. At least. I mean, we, we've been in uh, uh, client engagements. I helped you and your firm. I helped, uh, you know, we've been involved in some some other investment type opportunities. So the premise of the show is for you to introduce yourself. Sort of it's a platform to say who you are, what you're doing, what's with the, uh, you know, tell people about your you know background in Trinidad and which <laughs> took me a while to figure out. And then What's good? Tell me what's good in your life with you, your family. I know you're building a whole family of entrepreneurs, so uh, bring it on. Yeah, no, no. Awesome. I mean, it's, it's funny you say that, right? Just going back to my background. So, yeah, originally from Trinidad, um, grew up in the islands, which great place to be, um, British educated. So, unfortunately, I'm an accountant, like you said, by profession. Um, so, <laughs> became became a chartered accountant and then moved up to the U.S., man, I would say about 22 years ago. And, and really, you know, you, you talk about life as a journey and, and I, I look at your rules all the time and the rules of engagement and everything else and, and really enjoyed the journey over the last 22 years, peaks, valleys, you know, but you got to keep that solid, you know, line across and don't get too happy, don't get too high, don't get too low, um, but really, you know, had a great experience working in New York, working for KPMG, IPOs. Um, you you name it, like really good experiences over the years. And and then fast forward to the day, like you said, right? Um, even though with everything that's going on, I, I think one of the things, and I think Steve, you talk about this, is also keeping that that mental toughness and that ability to stay focused and stay disciplined um really, really has helped me out over, over the past like six months, right? I mean, with with what we're going through now, when you mentioned my kids, like my daughter, I, I talk to my my girls all the time about staying focused because even though times are challenging once we stay focused and we're disciplined i think we can get get through everything um and, and so like you know coming into this year you had asked me hey what's this year going to look like for your firm and i i would say best year ever right yeah pipeline you were on pace great. right yeah it's... yeah pipeline was great everything was going well you know we're, we're going to crush it and, and then march rolls around and you're like man what's what's happening now and you know you, you take the good with the bad um but i can tell you so march rolls are wrong and i'm looking out for the rest of the day i'm like well you know, we just got to stay focused and keep doing the same things we do right don't don't get yourself away from your routine keep getting up at 4 30 in the morning and try to get <laughs> you know no but, but like you said you know get that routine get yourself in that routine do what you need to do the results will come right but, but stay in routine and, and and do what you need to do. So kept doing that. And, and listen, we're in, we're in September, September 1st today. We've made it through the, the most challenging time. And I've actually seen some really good green shoots now of, of activity. Oh, Good. I like that term. I like that term a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you like that, right? Yes. No, we're, we're seeing some really good green shoots of activity um, going forward and then going into next year. Slow. But you know what? It's always good to see that. 
versus all the negativity. And and, and you talk about it, Steve, all the time, right? You got to block out that negativity. Um, Because once that starts circulating within you and you get that negative energy, it just, just doesn't do any good. You know, it's it's really interesting for me, just like you, you get a look at lots of different industries. You're involved. Your client base is pretty diverse. And so to your point, you know, adversity is never going to go away. Adversity looks different. This one looked like, oh, my God, shutdown. But 9-11 recessions, all the things that have happened to us in the past all made business challenging. And I always look at people and go, you know, like they say, in these uncertain times. And I'm going, at what point was it certain? I mean, there was, you're not guaranteed anything. So, you know, you have a a pulse on the economic side of it, the financial side of it. So why don't you speak to that, what your clients have done, how you've helped them through, because I know your firm is very progressive and you're involved in some really cool stuff. So I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah, you know, so so we'll, how we look at even our client base and we look at the whole economy is there's there's, there's a there's businesses that rely on the economy, um, and there's businesses that non, don't necessarily rely on the economy. And and why I say that, you have the whole startup um, ecosystem, which you you very well know about, and within that startup ecosystem, once you've been able to raise enough capital, right, you 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 basically should have enough runway for the next eighteen to twenty four months. Right. So when we talk to people about cash flow forecasting and cash planning, right, this is not something new, like you said, right? This is this is right. this, should, this should always be there, right? This, this is like business 101. Um, but it's just kind of being brought to the light much more now based on what's going on. So we sit down and we talk to people and we're like, hey, you gotta be thinking about the future, you gotta be always forecasting. And and not necessarily, I'm not trying to be be negative, but you gotta think of worst case scenarios so you can do your best case planning, right? So when we, we when we break down all clientele, we look at that and we said, okay, we have clientele that don't rely on the economy because they're in that started ecosystem. And we really sit down and advise them in terms of forecasting, get your expenses right, be efficient, be lean, um, automate as much as possible, and then really go to market. And Steve, you know this, really sit down and focus on your sales as well, right? Because a lot of times people just think that, hey, we can cut our way to profitability. Well, that's not really the best answer. The best answer no, never is, is. is the growth, right? And, and you talk about this all the time too, is growing that top line and really have an activity in your sales side and your pipeline and getting that pipeline full really drives profitability, really drives growth. And also sets up these startup, any, any company in the startup ecosystem to raise more funding in the future as well, right? Um, and, so, and so, so it's interesting because that's the discipline that every business should have and what happened in the last 12 to 18 months, I think people got lazy and people got sort of full of, wow, the economy is exploding and it's gonna always be like this. And so all of a sudden the gates come down and people are shocked. Well, that's because you didn't plan for it. you know. And if you get back to a disciplined mindset and you get back to basics, which is what I've always admired about you, you're not emotional. I'm an emotional guy. I get into startups. I'm like, oh, this is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. You know, and you're like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes, you know? So, so speak to me more about discipline for everybody as they're going through this, both in business and in personal, because I know personally you've done the same thing. Yeah. No, it's, it's funny you say that too. I, I agree with you, Steve. I mean, discipline and setting cadences, it, to me, it sets you up for success personally. As, as well as professionally, I, I joke sometimes that one of the first things you should do every day is make your bed, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you know about that, right? I it, totally it, do, man. Getting yourself that first thing you do every single morning sets up for the rest of the day. You're right. Small accomplishments, being disciplined to get stuff done early. And you and I talk about this, getting up early. By the time it's nine o'clock, you've had four hours worth of work done, right? And that's because you're disciplined as well. And we talk about it all the time is being disciplined in your approach, um, both business, both professional and uh, personally, because that sets up many tasks and, and you, you can chunk chunk up everything rather than, you know, you sit there and you think, man, you know, I got to achieve this in, in 12 months or in 14 months. 
Um, everything is broken down into simple tasks. You're disciplined every day. You have your to-do list. You cross it out. I'm old school. I still have my notebook, right? And, and I write everything down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I write everything down. I don't care what school they call it. It works. Man. <laughs> you know? It works. Right. And then it just sets that cadence in, in your mind. It sets that discipline. And then things get knocked off. And then you see, you feel that sense of accomplishment. And this has been proven scientifically, right? Once you feel that sense of accomplishment, you're then geared up to do the next task. And then the next task. Right. And, and you get that sense of accomplishment and you get more motivated to do more and more and more. And so we, we talk about tell me something good. Right. That's the overall good feeling that we have that we need every day. Right. Because then that keeps us going. Yeah. So, you know, when I, when you look at your business and you and I had, you know, we caught up a week or so ago, we had this conversation, you know, you, you not only have the responsibility of your clients, you have the responsibility of your own business, which you know, you start stacking those responsibilities. So you have a responsibility to your clients, to your business, to your family. You know, what was the mindset for you as a leader of an organization that was growing and doing great stuff? And then the brakes hit. Well, how did you mentally get through that? Yeah. So the first thing that came to my mind, um, you know, was, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. Right. But, but then the second thing was like, well, you know, like you said, I've been here before, right? I'm, I'm 1999, you know, I was in the dot-com boom, went through the bust in 2000. Wow, right? yeah. And that was, was a big bust, man. Big, Woo. big bust. Um, Woo. I lived in New York for 9-11, right? So I, oh, I went wow. through that, that downturn as well in 2001 where I'm seeing my friends um, being laid off, right? Friends at the firm and everything else. So went through that, um, went through the 2008 financial crisis, right? And in, so just in my mind, after the oh shit moment, was kind of taking some time to reflect back. And, and you said it earlier too, Steve, we've been through this already. We, you know, um, uncertainty is there every day. We think certainty is there, but it's not, right? We get into that full yeah, sense of security. And then we get into this comfort zone, right? And then once you kind of go into that false sense of security in a comfort zone, to me personally, nothing really, you, you, don't, you, don't, you stay in that comfort zone and you don't really do anything to get yourself out of that. Because you're like, you know, hey, I do my thing. I go to work. I go home. Everything is fine. And you don't really grow and you don't really do much more. So, you know, one thing for me was sitting there and saying, we've all been through this before. And, and just in my career, I've been through it. This is my fourth time going through a boom and a bust. Um, you know, so I'm like, you know, been through this before and we always come out of it, but, but you got to have that mental toughness and, and mindset. I, I think mindset is also key. And Steve, I mean, I know you talk about this, but having that mindset of, of success, that mindset that you will get through it. And, and once you can develop the mindset, now set in the different tasks that you need to accomplish to achieve that, right? So the first thing is just getting your mind right and your mind straight. Um, and so that's what I did. And Not so an easy thing to do, by the way, when the rest of the world is screaming, oh God, oh God, oh shit, oh shit. You know, you look at the your neighbor and they're in a worse situation than you are. So it's kind of hard to like focus on, well, what am I grateful for? What can I, yeah. what's good about my situation? But that's where... You know, they say survival of the fittest and, you know, this was a correction and, and you're, yep. you're a master at this. Your brain is programmed to say these kind of corrections, the companies who were built right are going to explode. The ones who were weak and didn't have good cash flow, didn't have good principles, didn't have good people are going to get blown out. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at it, right? We can look at it in hindsight. Right, September 1, 2020, we basically erased all the losses in the stock market. Right. Come back in Go March. figure. Go right. figure. <laughs> the the <laughs> shortest time frame that we've had a, a, a crash and a correction, or a correction and an in, in upswing. Um, and in if you were like Chicken Little back in March, you would have actually missed out on this opportunity, right? Yeah. But, I so, mean, so I, st I stood still. Um, my advisor was great. And he said, we're going to chill. And, 
every month my statement kept going up and I was like, is, is something wrong? Man? You were talking about something good. I was like, I don't get it. Yes. <laughs> so yes, he goes, absolutely. don't ask. Nobody does. <laughs> to like your point, if you were a company that were always doing the right things and planning, this was just, I mean, yeah, we had, you know, obviously there's, there's, there's businesses that are, that were ripe for disruption. And, and if you weren't looking forward and trying to figure out what the future is going to look like, we've just accelerated five years worth of technology transformations into six months, right? Yeah. So, so you look at a company like Zoom, which yesterday came up with their earnings and it started. Crazy. Up, yeah. Quadruples <laughs> revenue. 365% something stupid, yep. man. It was like, yep. you know, I remember a year and a half ago, I tagged Eric Yon, who's the CEO in a post because I was using Zoom before anybody. And I was connecting with people all over the place. I was able to do my coaching calls that way. And I thanked him. He reached out to me. I had a great conversation wow. with him. Well, at that point, there was, you know, no one knew who Zoom was. Now yeah. it's, you know, every school, every, it's crazy. You know, so your yeah. point is well taken, really well taken. Yeah. So, so they, if you think about them, great company, great timing. Um, and they basically accelerated where they would have been in two to three years. Yeah. They're there now. Right. Um, and, and they were ready for the moment, which is great, right? Because sometimes you're not prepared for the moment. They were ready for the moment. They took it. They went. They ran with it. So, you know, when you, when you look at companies and the companies we work with, there's always also, you know, thinking about where the future is and, and, and knowing that that future could be accelerated, which, you know, we saw that now, and, and making sure you have the plan for that. But back to your question, Steve, about, you know, so, you know, March hits, we're looking at this. My, my first inclination was, well, how do we make sure our clients make make it through this? How do we make sure our firm make it through this? And, and how do we make sure our people are okay as well? That's all it was about, right? Just, just making sure, it, in my mind, it was never about cutting or anything like that. It was just, what do we need to do to get through this? Because we know, and in my mind, honestly, I estimated a year. I said, well, you know, probably take us 12 months to get out of this. Um, I mean, you know, the market is We're starting to the peak market. out of it now. Yeah. We're you know, it's interesting. Start. It's interesting if you took those three principles and just pulled them out and went to a business school and said, isn't this the way every business should start and run? And that's the metric at any given time you want to take a temperature. Are we taking care of our clients? Are we taking care of our firm? And are we taking care of our people? Uh, I don't know that it, there's anything better than that. And when you lose sight of that, that's where the troubles go. So in our last minute, because uh, you're you and I could talk all day yeah. long. Um, what do you want the audience to know about you? Who should be reaching out to you? We're fortunate that we get a, a fairly sizable audience. So, you know, get, tell the audience who you want to reach out to you to connect ask for help and what's your sort of sweet spot yeah absolutely so i would say any any type of business um any business guy any business that's out there that's looking to grow that's been growing and, and they want to grow profitable they want to grow pretty fast and profitably and, and then honestly at some point looking to plan for an exit because it's great to have a business and, and have a you know a lifestyle type business but at some point in time you have to maximize that business value as well and that comes in the form of an exit so when we look at Love our it. businesses, yeah, it's looking at companies that are growing pretty fast. They want to grow profitably. And then at some point doing that business exit planning is where we can really bring a lot of help. That's um, uh, keep keeping your eye on the prize, man. <laughs> <laughs> Exits That's are right. fun, man. Um, I really appreciate you taking time. I know that things are crazy busy for you. You, I knew you'd be a great guest. This is so much fun. I'll share your information with everybody. What's and up? as it, as you're talking, there's two people I want to introduce you to. So uh, we'll follow up after this. But thank you for sharing something good. You were great. Awesome. Take care, Steve. See, See you. you.